How much protein should you eat per day? Do you need to take protein shakes? What if you want to gain muscle? What if you want to lose fat? What if you want to gain muscle and lose fat? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in today's video, folks. Welcome, everyone. I'm Dr. Sam Spinelli, physical therapist, strength and conditioning coach with Cis Athletics. And in this video, we're going to break down how much protein you should eat per day. In this conversation, I'm going to periodically discuss research as I think it's best we operate off of more than just my opinion and experiences, and instead bring in the best available evidence. So let's get into it. There are a few different numbers commonly thrown out about how much protein someone needs per day. So let's discuss them. Here in Canada, and I believe in the most other parts of the world, the RDA or recommended daily allowance of protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram or 0.362 grams per pound. So for someone who weighs 70 kilograms or 155 pounds, their RDA of protein comes out to about 56 grams. For most people, this could look like two eggs, two pieces of bread, four ounces of chicken breast, a cup of chickpeas, and a cup of veggies, which would be about two meals for most people weighing around that 70 kilograms. Now, an important consideration here is that this number is not for those looking to maximize muscle development, performance, or pretty much anything other than basic survival. In general, this number is the low end in all scenarios. Basically, if you don't exercise and you don't mind your muscle wasting away over time, eat this number. I'm going to assume that most people watching this don't fall in this category, and that instead you're probably individuals that exercise and want to keep your muscle mass. So when we start to look past the RDA, we see a few different numbers that commonly come up. The first one is 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.7 grams per pound. This number started getting more popular in recent years after a 2018 meta-analysis came out showing that exceeding this number didn't provide any additional benefit. Now for most people who see this and use this number, they're missing a few key details from the paper. Firstly, the meta-analysis was primarily conducted on untrained individuals. This is a problem as we've seen untrained individuals can generally get away with less protein intake than trained folks. I'm going to assume again that for most people watching this video, you work out regularly. So we need to consider that as well. If you don't regularly work out, this still applies for you because once you get past that novice stage, you're gonna to need to factor this in. Secondly, the meta-analysis was done generally in those in either an isocaloric diet or a calorie surplus. So if you're trying to lean out and you're in a caloric deficit, then this information doesn't apply as well. So what we can take away from this study is that if you're someone new to training and either aiming to maintain your weight or gain weight, then 1.6 grams per kilogram or 0.7 grams per pound is a good starting point. Another number that's commonly thrown out is one gram per pound of body weight or 2.2 grams per kilogram. This number is one of the most common numbers nowadays arguably because it's simple. It's hard to say where it got its origins, but we do see this pop up frequently in a lot of different research studies. For instance, these papers identified for those who are resistance trained individuals and lift on a regular basis, the prior number might be a bit too low. And so going up to one gram per pound for body weight is probably a good idea. I generally like this number for individuals because first off, when we look at the research from the earlier section and this section, it helps reinforce that for those who train regularly and either are trying to lose fat mass or not, but want to pack on muscle mass, it's generally a good number. Secondly, it's for sure not too low of a number. That's one of the main problems with the prior recommendation. It's very possible that for many people, 0.7 grams per pound or 1.6 grams per kilogram is an okay amount for packing on muscle. However, for a lot of people, it might be too low and they might end up not making the gains that they want. Going to this higher number ensures they get good results. It's also a super simple number that makes it easy for people to track and operate off of. Now, as much as I do like this number, it does have its flaws. For instance, if you're a larger individual, particularly one who has more fat mass, it could really be overshooting the number that you need. Again, that wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing, but it could make for some challenges such as if you're trying to cut down on fat mass, it would make you eat less carbs or fat, or just the amount of protein might give some people GI distress. 
So this could be some challenge there. And that's one of the main flaws with utilizing the body weight based numbers. It doesn't account for fat mass versus lean body mass. You see, we aren't looking to use our protein intake to support fat mass. What we are looking to do is use our protein intake to support our lean body mass, such as our muscle, in either maintaining or actually increasing, also known as hypertrophy. So that's where we see these other numbers come in that are based on lean body mass. 2.3 to 3.1 grams per kilogram or 1 to 1.4 grams per pound of lean body mass is one of the more popular current evidence-based recommendations for those either cutting, looking to maintain their mu muscle mass, or those looking to trying to pack on lean mass. Generally, those looking to pack on muscle mass can get away with a little bit lower protein intake since they'll still have a surplus of carbs and fat that can accommodate less protein. So for an individual who weighs 70 kilograms or 155 pounds and is 20% body fat, this person will be looking at around 124 to 173 grams of protein per day. Now, some might be wondering, how can you determine your body fat percentage to actually use this formula? Well, there are a bunch of different ways, but the easiest thing that you can do is actually just look up body fat percentage pictures, male, or body fat per percentage pictures, female. You can find some websites with pictures of different ranges, and then just be honest with yourself and match yourself up accordingly. These are relatively quite accurate and give you an idea to operate off of. For instance, based off this website, me and Broden are each about 10 to 14% body fat. So you can definitely go in and use more complicated systems like a DEXA scan, underwater weighing, or skin calipers, but they're not necessarily gonna provide you much more utility in this conversation. So let's summarize. The RDA isn't a good number to use if you lift or wanna keep your muscle mass for a long time. Formulas based solely on body weight are limited, but being somewhere between 0.7 grams per pound of body weight and one gram per pound of body weight is often sufficient for most people. If you wanna be a bit more accurate, going with somewhere between one and 1.4 grams per pound of lean mass is gonna be your best option. One last thing I wanted to discuss is can you eat too much protein? Is too much protein dangerous? Commonly, people will think that high protein diets can be harmful to the kidneys and to the bones. So we wanna consider that unless you're someone who currently has compromised kidney function or an otherwise condition that would affect your kidneys, it's unlikely that a high protein diet is gonna be challenging to your kidneys. So for the vast majority of individuals with healthy functioning kidneys, probably most people watching this, you're good to go with a higher protein diet. Same thing for your bones. It shouldn't have any significant impact unless you have some sort of compromised health issue. In those cases, you should definitely be speaking to a physician about this. Now, the other part of the topic that we wanna to discuss is what comes with a generally high protein intake diet or a higher protein intake. Firstly, if you end up eating a lot more protein than you need or what's been recommended by research, the worst case scenario for a healthy functioning individual is that it gets broken down and converted into other energy substrates. Essentially, it gets transformed into glucose or fat. So not really a big deal. Secondly, for some people they may experience some GI distress with higher degrees of a protein intake. Usually this is either an issue with volume per serving, which we're gonna discuss in a future video, or going too high in protein in general. So just titrate down your protein and experiment with what's right for you. And that's it folks. Thanks for watching the video, really appreciate it. And we'll catch you in the next video.